gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fabulous to have you here. We're here with Mike Pullen from TA Outdoors. Make sure you go check out his channel at the end of the video. And of course, we're working on his own self-designed bushcraft knife. This is O1 tool steel. And in yesterday's episode, we left off putting this in the forge to anneal it. The reason behind that was we needed to anneal it so that we could drill it because we couldn't drill it yesterday. Well, fun story. Tried to drill it today. That's how many holes we've got through. We have not had much success. So that's a big problem because the drill that I was using is going to work perfectly for the wonderful bronze wire that I was going to use, which is right here and looks very nice and bronzy and it's nice, you know, and it fits in there just nice and perfectly with the right amount of clearance so it's not too tight, gives us a slight amount of, uh, slight amount of, uh, of, of, uh, of mess up ability, you know, a few thousandths. And so that would have just been like the perfect drill bit. I've now been through three of those drill bits. I've sharpened them. I've sharpened one of them like four or five times and I started getting through. This O1 is just extremely tough and I haven't been able to do the correct annealing procedure on it. Clearly, it's a finicky material. When you buy it, it's already annealed and very easy to machine, but I presume that annealing process requires a little more uh, complexness than my forge cooling down overnight can provide. High-speed steel drill bits, they don't like this. You know what will like it? Carbide will be able to manage it, though. Carbide is able to drill very hard materials. It's just that I don't have the exact same size. So I'm going to be a little ways undersized when I use this. And the bad part is, not only am I going to be undersized on the pin material, but I don't even have the collet to hold this because I didn't replace it when I adapted it to work with the actual pin material a few weeks ago. You might have remembered, three millimeter collet, I destroyed it. And so machinists, look away because we're now doing some good machining sacrilege. We're putting a carbide end mill in a Jacob's chuck, causing heart attacks around the world. Hey, by the way, if any machinists want to look away until this sacrilege is over, uh, go to this timestamp in the video. Okie dokie, you guys can look now. Sorry machinists, I lied. Uh, you definitely still want to look away. Right, machinists, you, you can look back now. I'm sorry. If you want to know why I can, you know, why probably many people consider what I just did really, really horrible, it's because I was taking a ball end mill that's carbide, um, using it to countersink the holes, because I do not have, you know, all I have is a high speed steel countersink, and it's just not going to cut this. Uh, and so obviously, you know, it's just not a nice way to treat a $20 tool, not the correct way of doing it. But I think I, think I want to get into the adage of it's not stupid if it works. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. Anyway, it is now time for us or for you to heat treat your bushcraft knife. So we're gonna get that forge hot and we're gonna harden that thing after a couple of normalizing cycles. Let's do it. And so in we go for normalizing cycle. Number one, we're gonna heat it up to a critical temperature. And so there we go. We're just simply gonna let that cool down to run temperature. So we did a few more normalizing cycles. We've now quenched it. Make sure you guys go check out his channel so that you can see the quench because it went pretty well. We did, did a little bit of practice before. No cracks that I can see. No cracks that we can see. And you see this beautiful lighter color here. That's the modern site. So this yeah. is definitely hardened. It looks just fabulous. Does it look bent? No, it looks pretty damn straight to me. Looks straight. Outstanding. And now once we wipe off all the oil, we are going to go into the tempering oven, the oven, the cooking oven, <laughs> at uh, 200 degrees Celsius for an hour. And then uh, what we're going to do actually while that's happening is... We need to select the wood. So what do you reckon? What do you want to use? We have some ebony. We have some lignum vitae, which is this beautiful green stuff. We got some of that. I believe that's olive wood. Well, that's a tough one. Do you know what? I think this one. Because I've already got one with sort of darker brown. So okay. that was... Brill. That so this is lignum. Beautiful green. This is how it looks straight off the saw. So it takes an oil really nicely. It really makes the colors pop. We just got to cut it out of that bad boy. So I've now got the uh, lignum here mounted up in the mill and we're now going to make it nice and dirty and make a nice mess with some wood dust. We're going to face across it here and we're going to get a couple flat sides Then we can zip down it on the band saw and then flatten a couple more sides and uh, we should be good to go by the time your piece is tempered to then uh, start really, really cracking on with the handle scales. Exciting stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's make some dust.
We pulled it out of the tempering oven, beautiful straw temper on it. We left it about 200 degrees Celsius for an hour and uh, it came out of his quench looking really nice and straight, which is very good. The next step is we're gonna go back into the grinding room. Those bevels are 50 thousandths of an inch thick. We need to bring those down to kind of less than 10 thousandths of an inch thick before we start moving all the way up, you know, 60, 120, 243, 20, um, and then 400 grit, probably there to finish on the edge. This is a Scandi grind, so of course we're going to zero. We're not gonna do the final sharpening, however, until we handle it, which is gonna be the step after that. We have been uh, also considering the idea of leaving this oxide finish on the side of the blade, give it a kind of a, you know, a little bit of a black look, and I think that's gonna look really nice, especially once it's oiled. So we're not gonna be touching the sides or the spine, we're just gonna be touching that edge, getting that thing ground down to where it needs to be. So it's now back in the grinding room for a little more grinding. I'm sure I said something about not making it sharp. This is straight off the belt, like unreal. This Scandi grind, like that's straight off a belt, hasn't even been stropped, unreal. So in the interest of not cutting myself, I put some electrical tape there. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take a couple drops of super glue, little drop there, little drop there, little drop there. We're gonna take scale, number two, set it on that bad boy, flip her over, make sure we got plenty of clearance, let the glue dry. I'm gonna have you drill these holes, which is good. We're set up on the wooden block so we can drill all the way through, no problem. We're gonna go straight through the holes here in the Tang, drill all the way through, you know, once you're into here, um, then pull up. We got this here, it's a little screw, so that hopefully we'll stop that spinning. But again, we want to be careful that we don't bind it. So you want to make sure that when you lift up with the drill, you're applying downwards pressure so it doesn't come up at an angle. If it comes up at an angle, we're going to cam it and it'll you'll end up with a 2000 RPM spinning blade. I would strongly recommend against, uh, against a 2000 RPM spinning blade. We've super glued up the next piece and uh, so you can drill, drill some more holes. There we go, look at that. So a little tap with a hammer. Before breaking that off, give it a little scribe there around the perimeter of our, uh, of our tang. And that scribe line means that we can give her a, uh, give her a little zip here at the bandsaw. So now we're going to degrease this tang, make sure there's no grease on it. Rough up that oxide surface a little bit. You see I've taken the uh, small wheel there on the belt grinder and we've ground in there. That gives us 60 grit and a little more surface area for the glue to adhere to. We're going to be using epoxy. Epoxy likes actually to be a little bit thicker in its bond and so that helps get it to have a little bit of a thicker bond. It also means that we just get a little more surface area because of the higher grit to, uh, to really contact onto our epoxy. We've also primed the surface of our scales themselves with, a, again, a little bit of 180 grit. So we're gonna glue this up. I'm gonna use a five minute epoxy here. Obviously, there are much better epoxies that you can get, um, but as with most things, you get what you, uh, you get out, what you put in, and uh, if, you're, if you're crunched with time, this is what we got. So if you squeeze some of that in there and mix her up, uh. <laughs> uh, nice. A little more, keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go, that'll work. Now mix her up nice and vigorously. Great, then now cover these two surfaces with the, uh, with the glue. Get a nice kind of even coating. Doesn't need to be massively thick, but just gotta be even. And three times as fast as that, because we do not have much time. The pot life on a five minute epoxy is very, very little. Warp speed, cover everything. You need to get a little more glue on it. Okay, next one too. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go! Perfect, perfect, perfect. And we gotta be quick now. I'm gonna fill up that little laugh. Full of there. There we go. So now, ah, set that puppy over the top of it. This can go over the top. Now we'll give her a uh, little clamperoonie. There we go, look at that. Wipe off the excess from where we do not grind it. And hopefully we haven't messed up too badly. Here we go. It has been setting for about an hour and a half or so. I'd like to leave it a little more before we work it, but it is time for Mike to start grinding on this, getting this handle profile sorted.
There we go. Mike, how have you enjoyed making your first ever knife? It's been unbelievable. Unbelievable, seriously, the best project ever. So cool, and it, you know, it fits so good, doesn't it? We were saying it earlier. It's it's, it's what happens. This is the great thing about getting to make your own knife because you get to you get to make it fit your hand perfectly. So uh, you're gonna do a video of using this thing, right? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Probably multiple videos, and I'll, I'll you know do various projects with it. A bit of maybe a bit of carving, but just general bushcraft stuff. Outstanding. On his channel right now, am I correct? Is your flint striker video? Yeah, sure, yeah. So he made a flint striker. You saw me make one little tutorial the other day. Well, he made one, and you can go see him do that on his channel as well as all the other things. In a couple of days, he's gonna have his side of making this. He did an outstanding job. Grinding is very difficult, hammering is very difficult. He did awesomely. That is a testament to his outdoorsy skills. <laughs> go subscribe to his channel, go learn some outdoorsy stuff, enjoy this wonderful production quality quality, the incredible entertainment that he provides there. The link to TA Outdoors is in the description below. Make sure you go subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. It has been, uh, it's been a real pleasure. So Mike, thank you so much for coming. Cheers, and man. I'm thrilled because uh, we're going to flip it around the other way and I'm going to go la learn some bushcraft stuff. Yes, we can yeah. make some fires and, uh, and, and go learn how to, how to be in the woods and have that fun. So make sure you subscribe here too so you can see that. Thank you guys and I'll see you very soon.